Hello Internet. Big Dave here and I am Chief. I'm afraid the worst has happened. Operation Global Remedy has failed and we are looking at a vast depletion of the Earth's resources. Should we engage on our final backup plan? This astronaut is the only chance humanity has left for survival. Are you aware this is a do or die mission? Once we launch, there's there's no turning back. We have no choice. All mankind depends on it. Please, deliver us the moon. Deliver us. Please, deliver us. Please, deliver us. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to introduce you to Deliver Us the Moon. This work-in-progress title is currently running a Kickstarter with about 50 hours left as of this recording. They are just about 8000 US dollars short of their overall goal. This game is being developed by a Dutch studio called Keoken Interactive, and while it doesn't seem like they've developed any complete and released games yet, they do have a project that seems to have been going for a while that they have moved to the back burner while they focus on Deliver Us the Moon. Now, this game came to my attention through email, as many things do these days, but I was really intrigued by it once I actually sat down and played it, because there's not a whole lot of action going on. It's very steeped in atmosphere as you start the game. The intro that you just watched kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing. You are an astronaut, the Earth's last hope, if you will, and you have to uh, go to the moon for some reason. Uh, it is a five-part episodic game, so more and more of the story will certainly be revealed as you attempt to uh, save the world. But right now, all we really know is we're an astronaut, and we need to get to the moon. This is a fairly short demo. I'm going to play through the whole thing for you here, just so you can get an idea of exactly what this game is. And, you know, you should head over to the Kickstarter and maybe take a look if you want to consider backing it. The Kickstarter is absolutely top notch. It's a wonderfully constructed Kickstarter page. They've got charts and graphs and everything that you would want to know, including an overall game budget, which includes the Kickstarter and money that they're raising themselves to make the game a reality. So I love it when I get a detailed breakdown of a Kickstarter. Nothing makes me want to open my wallet faster than a pie chart showing me how you're going to spend the money. So good on them for doing that, because that is a thing that I think every single Kickstarter should have. We are using the Unreal Engine here, or rather I should say they are using the Unreal Engine here, and the game looks pretty darn good. Now, this is a very early version, and I do have the settings totally maxed out on my 980, but uh, I'm, not really, uh, I'm not really wanting for much. I think it's a fantastic looking game, uh, you know, realistic style, I do have to say. Before I get too far away, i got to point out I love this NASA-esque logo that they've come up with. In fact, the, the design of almost everything in this game is just perfect. It all seems very utilitarian. It seems very... maybe just five to ten years near future kind of space stuff. Uh, but it, it all just really, really looks great. So I'm going to take a, a trip down to the spacecraft, which is unfortunately obscured by the uh, launch tower here. But uh, we're going to jump in, and we are going to the moon. Nice little elevator ride. Again, this this beginning part of the game just feels it's it's just steeped with... It's just thick with tension, you know? Not really sure exactly what's going on, but obviously the dire nature of the, the initial message lets you know that something uh, very bad is happening, and you are indeed the only hope. Uh, so we jump into the uh, the cockpit here, and all of a sudden... Uh, it's a it's a it's a simulation game all of a sudden. Uh, all right, uh, so yeah, we got a, a rocket quick start guide. You know, like like you do, right? Spaceman out there, you, you use your rocket quick start guide, and uh, we've got a series of steps, seven steps to get us off of the Earth, and uh, ten steps in total. So once we're airborne, we'll have to take care of another three. So these steps are pretty simple. They mainly just require us to. Uh, search for buttons and press them. So we're looking for the ground launch sequencer, and indeed there it is. 
We'll move on to step two as we retract the orbiter access arm. Uh, that is... I've done this demo like three times, and so I've almost memorized all these buttons, but not quite. Start auxiliary power, which is over here. There it is. We can hear things happening in the background. A good sound design in this game, uh, for the most part. Everything that I've uh, that I've been aware of has been nice, solid sounds. Uh, good, uh, good feeling to the sounds. Deep, uh, reverberating sounds, and I, I really like that. Uh, gaseous oxygen. Uh, all right, vent arm. There it is. Uh, we want to activate the sound suppression system. You know, that's that's a good thing. Don't want to blow out our eardrums on our way to the moon. And hydrogen burn-off system, which is down here. There it is. And now, throw the switch. Main engine ignite. And we are airborne. I am playing with a mouse and keyboard. You may be able to, I don't think you should, but you may be able to hear my controller vigorously vibrating on the floor. Uh, this particular sequence uh, definitely causes a, uh, a cacophony of vibration throughout my uh, Xbox 360 controller, uh, though again, playing with the mouse and keyboard. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're exiting the uh, atmosphere here. I can see space becoming a reality. I see stars. Uh, one thing I do have to say about this particular section of the game, I, d I do wish there was maybe a little bit more, a little bit more going on, you know, only having these little side windows to peek out of. Uh, it, it does a good job of kind of limiting your perspective and therefore, I guess, creating a tension or an atmosphere, uh, but also uh, I really would love to see the actual takeoff process. And here we go. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and cut the main engines. One of these buttons will certainly do that. There it is. Stage separation now. There it is. And let's ignite our second stage and rendezvous with moon base something or other. I'm sure it has a name. The game plays in first or third person mode. I tend to enjoy playing it in the, the third person mode for the most part, though I have noticed myself going to first person on occasion in order to be able to more easily read a screen or uh, see a detail in the world that I really want to see. Uh, I, I love just that, that docking sequence. It's just, it's just beautiful in its simplicity, just the slow move in. And, and overall, I have to say, I feel like they have a, a pretty good handle on, on uh, the design of this space station. It's, it's a really... It's a really well done space station overall, I have to say. And uh, we got a we got ourselves a warning here: oxygen uh, oxygen breach. That can't be good. And the moment that we leave that area, uh, you may even be able to visually notice it. Now we are without atmosphere. We are without uh, full gravity. And and he he moves and he he lurches. Uh, like uh, like a, a human body that is no longer encumbered by uh, the full gravity of the Earth, and and it feels really good to play it. Uh, but I don't want to dilly dally too much because you can see my oxygen counter that is counting down, and uh, I certainly don't want to die before my mission to save the Earth is even fully underway. Uh, I'm tempted to explore a lot of this, but I'm just going to stay on the critical path here. Oh, a helpful oxygen canister. That will refill my reserves, and I will continue moving around the space station. You can see here, well, maybe you can see, I'm sending power, uh, or I'm guessing it's power, I don't know, to the center module. Which e with each of these button presses, I'm locking down and engaging uh, what might be the... Oh, it's like, a, okay, I get it. I've never noticed this detail before. It is, it is literally like a space elevator down to the moon. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Let's see. Is there a reason to go down here? I, I want to say there's got to be. Come on, give me something. Don't make this whole journey for naught. Anything? No? No? All right. Well, I should probably move along before I suffocate. Again, just look at that lumbering, that lumbering motion of the, of the run there. I just, I love it. 
I love it. It's just, it's so well thought out and so well done. Is that an oxygen? Yes, it is. I found more oxygen. Precious, precious oxygen. And here we go. Just lots of really, really good design in these rooms. Uh, you know, the, the game again, like I said, it's it's Unreal Engine 4. Uh, looks great, but I think, I think the design uh, that's gone into this game, it just, it absolutely shows through and it, it, is, it is a huge strong point of this game. Uh, now, the actual gameplay is, uh, uh, so far, at least in this demo, again, we have five full episodes uh, coming out over the course of, of a year, starting in August uh, 2016. So, the actual gameplay in this demo uh, consists mainly of light puzzle solving. Exploration and light puzzle solving seems to sort of be uh, the uh, the order of business on the, on the Kickstarter page as well. Uh, so, yeah, we do have a flashlight here that, that can help us to illuminate things. And now I'm assuming maybe, well, maybe I shouldn't assume uh, that there will be some sort of narration here. Uh, someone on Earth who's talking to you. Uh, oh, you, you're going to need to uh, get uh, the elevator, call the elevator up here uh, so that you can get uh, down to the planet's surface because that's actually what we have to do. But I only know that because I've actually I've, I've done the demo a couple times. Uh, so, yeah, let's figure out how we can get this thing open. I, I can tell you that it involves this little pedestal right here and a friend that we're going to meet in just a few minutes. So let's explore this space station just a little bit. The music in the background creating a great atmosphere. There's just a sense of dread here. There's an, an eerie sense of emptiness uh, in the space station that I think they really pull off well. So we're going to head over here and we are going to take a look at this computer, which is not on, but there's a button. And press it. Oh, hey, look, something opened. Hmm. How about we take it? And that has sealed us into this room. Luckily, we've got a gun now. Uh, it doesn't really do a lot other than open doors. It is a door opening gun. And that is about 100% of what it does at this point. Uh, it's going to be, there are going to be, you know, utility tools, welders and, and uh, energy beams and things like that in the uh, full version of the game. Uh, but as of right now, as of, in this, as of this demo, uh, the main thing you get to do with this is just open doors, which, you know, not a big deal. It's a good start. It's a good base to build on. You know, I'm not sure exactly what strange industrial design company uh, designed a ship that uh, requires a gun to open the doors, but uh, hey, you know, whatever works. Low bidders win contracts. A nice little uh, sitting area here for the crew again. Wonder what happened to the crew. I don't know. Uh, so much of this game is mysterious because it is so early uh, in its life cycle. So, you know, things like this room. There's nothing in it that I can actually interact with, but I would hope or imagine at some point uh, that would change. I guess we'll see. Well, we'll see if they can close in on the last uh, few percentage points that they need in their Kickstarter and actually get this thing funded. Okay, well, a, a computer screen with a lot of red options on it and uh, another interesting looking room. So uh, I think we should maybe head down to that room. Now that I have a gun that opens doors, I'm never going to be able to resist opening a door with this gun. So if I see a door, I open a door. Even though that's not the critical path. Oh, uh, well, it's not the critical path for this little diversion. All right. Okay. Yeah. Ominous looking room. Friendly looking ball. Okay. Well, we can, we can pick him up. But how about let's not do that just yet. Let's try to get a handle on exactly what we need to do here. We'll pop in here, and, and again, this is a, you know one of those first-person type moments for me. Okay, so we've got to activate uh, three power poles, uh, lift a pedestal, and activate our AES droid, or ASE, excuse me. Uh, ASE stands for All-Seeing Eye, All-Seeing Eye. 
And let's pull back out to my preferred third person. We'll grab our little droid. Place him on the pedestal. Activate the pedestal. And nothing happens. We probably need to activate our power poles. Power poles activate. Here we go. Another. Yeah, so I said all this uh, gun does is open doors. I guess that's not entirely true because it also activates power poles. I feel like I shouldn't be in this room. This... Okay, yeah. Hmm... Activate the main procedure? I suppose we have no other choice. Here we go. Hey, ASC activated. What a violent way to activate. <laughs> Did Tesla come up with this machine? Why, why was, why was it uh, necessary to have a large arc of electricity? <laughs> to activate this guy. You couldn't just plug like a USB port into his back or something. Whatever. Now I have a friend that hovers behind me, so I'm just I'm just going to overlook it. And I am just going to I'm just going to run around and challenge my little uh, R2 surrogate to follow me here. He's having some difficulties. Good news, he will just warp straight out if you lose him. So, you know, we won't try to uh give him too hard of a time, but we will move forward. I don't want him to get stuck or, or, uh... Ooh, what's this door? I don't know that I've ever opened this door before. Oh, we found a command center. Any clues in here as to what's happened to the crew? Let's see. Okay. Yeah, information about spacesuits, right? Well, that doesn't look good. Yeah, okay. Well, you got too many, uh... <laughs> You've got a lot of error messages there. I, I think you did something that you probably weren't supposed to do. I guess a bit of foreshadowing here, seeing some devices and some things here that uh, might be revealed later in the game. Also, just a really great view out this window. The Earth there. Uh, an ominous light rising into space. Uh, that looks like something we might want to explore. So let's head in that direction. You'll notice we are now on the other side of that elevator that we saw as we first entered. And we are going to engage ASE. And he's going to kind of dance around and activate that ashtray. And now the elevator will come and get us. I love those doors, the way these inner doors drop down. Oh, oh no, ASE! I've lost you! Oh, good. You just teleported back in. All right. Oh, and we are without oxygen again, so... Here we go. You gotta get a move on. Excellent. Scavenging for resources here. Get ourselves some more oxygen. And here we go. I've got a feeling that we're headed places. There's the Earth. And now it's time to deliver the moon. And there you have it, folks, just as you thought you were about to learn a little bit more about the nature of Deliver Us the Moon. Slam back to title screen. That's it. That's the demo. That is their pitch, essentially, for why you should back this game. I have enjoyed my time with this game. I've put about, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour into my three to four playthroughs that I've done of this game. I have enjoyed it quite a bit. I like to see what they, they're going to do. I like to see how things are going to develop, how they're going to flesh this out. Again, some of this seems like it is calling out for 
uh, you know, Houston or Central or whatever to be talking to you while you're heading through the space station. I think it gives some uh, interesting storytelling possibilities. I think that the entire game, the mystery that it creates, uh, I think is, is absolutely compelling. And it is something that uh, I think you should at least consider backing on Kickstarter. I'm not saying spend your money. I'm saying head over to Kickstarter. You can find the link to this Kickstarter below in the description and uh, just take a look. Lots of positive press feedback, lots of uh, awards from the various shows where they've uh, shown this game. You know, it breezed through its green light, uh, and uh, it is just shy of raising a little bit over 100,000 U.S. dollars on Kickstarter right now and hitting that goal. I think it has a lot of potential. Again, Deliver Us the Moon, a five-episode space adventure exploration game that is asking for your money on Kickstarter. Head over there, take a look. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.